ready. No set. Welcome to the Monday, May the 7th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves around the table. Hannah Smith. Mike Miller, staff. Stephen Everett. Meredith Crandall, staff. Seth Mitchell. Benjamin Cheney. Unless anybody else has anything to offer for comments beforehand, we'll go to approval of the agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. And we'll go straight to the first application for 112 Main Street. Uh, applicant Lee Youngman. Hi, Lee. Come on up and have a seat. Tell us about your application. Um, so I want to put a darling little sign above my big bright purple awning. I thought the purple awning would be enough to tell people where we are, but clearly it's not. Um, I haven't had a sign for several years, and um, the sign is exactly the same color as the awning, and it mimics the logo that I have in my window. It's just one of those blade signs that comes out from the building. Mm -hmm. I would just have a comment in terms of mounting the steel bracket. Mm -hmm. Because there are clapboards on the building that's in a regular shape, yeah. you may want to get a pattern cut that fits the clapboards. Okay. Okay. I'm and, gonna have and wood that, and wood do the installation and so mount mount yeah. that between the bracket and the clapboards so that you get a flush mount against the clapboards okay. without sort of Mount the steel directly to the clappers for the cause of the um, the way the clappers are shaped. It'll indent gotcha. the clappers themselves. All so right. that's always a good way to mount them. Okay. I will pass it on to Wood and Wood to do the installation. They know what they're doing. They do know what they're doing. Yeah. I was just counting five rows and thinking about less than six inches per person. Six and a quarter inches. centered above the awning would be kind of the most visually appealing. Um, either centered above the awning or centered under the window above the awning, I think it's just going to look better than centered above the window under the awning. Uh, because the nail, nail salon is not obviously centered under the window either. Right. Right. But the only question he has is that those clappers are six inches. Count that one, two, three, four, five. That's 30 inches. Yeah. And your sign is 31 and a half. So, yeah. That's just a cast on this From the top of the. Right. And that's not even to the top of the, uh, the bracket. Right. Yeah. It would, it would actually come in No, they just they worked from that same photo. So I imagine that they can shrink it down. Um, I mean, it's just, you I don't know why they couldn't. Shrink yeah. your yarn ball. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. We can do that. We can do that. Um, would I need to come back if they determine what we that we need to shrink could, it down? What we could say is that the top of the bracket mm -hmm. shall not be higher than one full course below the window. Okay. If that's 
that's about where it's showing right now. Yeah, and that's going to really scale yourself down. Yeah. But if you make the bracket yeah. any higher than that, would you want to limit it to under the window sill? No, I like it. And what if you totally just push the sign all the way over to the, you know, to the left? So it goes out, didn't properly go at all. So it would be in this picture, plumb above the main. Yeah. Is your door, is this your door? That's our here? door, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Boy, I could do that. I Which would you that. prefer? Would you rather have it centered over the awning, or would you rather have it centered in the space to the left? And then you, could, you still couldn't go up really much higher than the... Well, if it was all the, the way below. above the Main Street sign, if we moved it to over here instead, then it probably wouldn't matter if it was flush with the windowsill or a little bit higher than the windowsill. I would still try to keep the top of the bracket this line at, at the that bottom line. of the okay. cell just for continuity and rhythm, right. rhythm of the signs. That, you know, this one is centered right, right. here. Right. There are two things that you could do to, to make the size fit in. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, again, you could shrink the, the yard ball a little. Yeah. And number two, you could move the sign closer to the bracket yeah. itself. Yeah. Because that's three inches right there. Right. And that yarn ball is a good 16, 18 inches tall. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I think I'd rather have it under the window than to the side of it. I mean, really what I want is people driving by to see it. That's really, that's all I care about. But I would also like it to look like it had been thoughtfully placed. And that's closer to your entry door as sure. well. Once you're here yep. on the side. Right. I'm not sure that people would be confused that it's down the alley, but right. it, this clearly states that it's right there, right yeah. over the center of your shop. Okay. All right. Well, luckily, it's a pretty simple sign. Um, so if they need to shrink it down to get it to fit in the space, I don't have a problem with that. Um, as long as this is also my to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, the auditors reviewed this. And they did have the city specs so um, when they did this design. Unless they've changed since last year, because they actually did the design last year, but then we weren't sure that our booth was going to get so renewed. It looks yeah. no larger than the mail sign sign in store in terms of square yeah. footage. Can you imagine in downtown that that size? Yeah, because of the way the logo is, um, you know, if I had a if I had a more horizontal um, logo, I think it would be okay. But just because this it's so compact, it really just looked like the best way to do a sign. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is just make a, an adjustment for yeah. the application. Right. Custom steel bracket. Can't be higher than one full board below the window. Is that what you said? So it flush with this. So it's basically showing slightly higher yeah. than your yeah. coil okay. there. Okay. So it'll come up to the top of the, the bottom of the first platform below the window. Yes. Side. Okay. Okay. I can live with that. Great.
Silly right now. So again, the, the only adjustment was a custom steel bracket will be mounted no higher than the bottom of the first clapboard below the windowsill above the sign and centered over the awning below, which is exactly where your right. edge is showing it be located. And so if that means I need to shrink the sign, that's okay with you guys. I don't need to come back for that, right? Just so that I'm clear. Okay, good. Thank you. you can, again, just make it, you know, size it so that it fits into that space. Sure. Okay. Okay. Very good. So well, the sign itself is nicely designed. Yes. The criteria that apply preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district it involves an historic structure acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials acceptable. Compatibility proposed landscaping not proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no lighting proposed for the sign, so not applicable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. Conformance with city's gate placement and design recommendations, acceptable. Compatibility with subject property and adjacent properties acceptable. Shall not obscure significant architectural details acceptable. Consistency and uniformity of multiple signs not applicable here. Illumination not applicable. Tenants and banners are prohibited not applicable here in this application. Individual letters affixed, painted, or engraved directly on the building or structure are encouraged. The sign of this location is acceptable. All in favor of the application, raise your right hand. And then get you to sign this in the space above my name right in the middle of the Please do quickly have a Motioner and a second on those, or should just go? You just do a all in favor. Okay. You just no, a just straight vote. I was just trying to yeah. make yeah. notes for a minute, so. We have never made a motion on the vote. Just okay. <laughs> all in favor or opposed. All right. You did this. And Thank you. Again, since we're advisory, Lee, since we're advisory, you would come to the next development review board meeting, which is. No, these are actually okay, now so going to, to administrative. Yeah. Okay. So, so gonna, you don't need. So to. I just need to do something, and I need to wait for you guys. Audra, Audra will be in touch. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh, good. Streamlining. Yes, it's, it's one of the few things that worked as planned. Good. The next application is for 110 Northville Street, Lot 49 Properties. Come up and tell us about your application. So I'm Britt Richardson. Nice to see you all tonight. Um, this apartment has three entrances. Um, I'm proposing to do some renovating on the interior, which um, would, by creating, uh, eliminate one of the entrances and replacing it with a, a window, I would be facilitating the renovation in interior, as well as um, closing up one of those windows to make a laundry area. So the other change that I'd like to make is changing the rear door on the south side to a sliding glass door instead of a, the door that exists there now. So we have the north side for all three Not, I don't think any of these doors are original. Um, this is an addition.
edition that was probably put on in the 40s, is my guess, from the cabinetry that's been in the house. Um, and the, the door is one of the door. The door that I'm, I'd like to eliminate is made of fiberglass. So it's clearly not original. So why was there that door? There are two going into one. Room. Two on the uh, north side. I don't have any idea. We inherited this when we purchased the property about 10 years ago. And the window itself is that it's a that marking for yes. Are they true divided or are they simulated? Um, I would like to use simulated divided lights just for efficiency. Yeah, actually it worked pretty well until you get right up to the window. You can't even tell it from anywhere but 20 feet back. It's almost impossible. And this this building is is not visible from the street yeah, this is at all. Well, it was the street side of this, but there it kind of realizes the one that's going it, Yeah, it, you can't even, most yeah. people don't even know the house exists. Precisely. So standing on the sidewalk, you can't see the house. Be about a hundred feet from that window. If you were standing on it. side exterior, um, you know, there are double hung windows above on the second floor, but this would end up being a smaller window, so I, my, my hope would be to make it look like the small window on the second floor in that exterior picture. So this one has nine divided lights, and either a casement or an awning window that looks that, like that. semi-congruous. I mean, if you look at the rest of the building, none of the windows look like this part of the building. They're all two over two instead of six over six. So it's sort of hard for me to choose which style do I match, so I'm trying to match the style of the addition. So what will that space be used for? It's a kitchen. It's currently a kitchen, and it will continue to be a kitchen. It just give you a space to put a washer dryer behind it without being blocking it. The washer dryer would be on the south side. Right here is where I'd like to put the stove. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't make sense to have the door okay. there anymore. Then I notice on the front it says replace door and window with a sliding glass door. Yep, on the on the south side there is a, a door there and a window next to it. And um, I would like to put a slider in there. To replace this door. To replace that door and the, the two over two window there. Oh, okay, so you'll take this window out and put a slider in here? I'd like to take the window out on the right. That's where mm -hmm. the, Steve's looking at the very last page. Um, so that window on the right-hand side would no longer be there at all. Right. And on the left-hand side, the window and the door. Okay, the slider that, will go right in Those here. two would be replaced by a slider. Okay. And we would keep that roof overhang? It would all fit within this roof overhang? Um, well, I could either, I could put the door here under the roof overhang or take the roof overhang off and put the door where the door and the window are. Do you want to move the overhang over so it covers the entire probably would not do that. I don't, I'm not attached to it. It could be, um, if... What is the roof, what is the roof line up here? It's hard to tell it's dark. Is that a flat roof or is it pitched the other it's, way? Or is it 
it's not a flat roof. It's pitched toward, it's pitched on both sides, toward north and Coming south sides. This way. Yep, pitched north and south. So everything's running off the roof and dropping down on the little patio at that door. Yeah, there's no patio. That's just um, like a cement. Um, I don't know the name for that. Piece. Just a walkway into the. It's not even a walkway. There's like a little piece of cement that okay. takes the the, the the rain away from the the house. And so you're not going to get dripped on mm -hmm. coming in and out of that door. It's not an. En it's not used as an entrance. All of the parking is on the north side. Okay. It's really just to access the yard. And okay. that's the only thing that is on the other side there, it's just the yard. This floor there, I mean, it's pretty hard to see what's going on here. I assume this is that spot right there. It's correct. And there's a tree in front of it that there's sort of shrub. looks like a staircase. In this. There's a shrub and the emergency exit staircase. Okay. And so. so the window that I'm proposing eliminating on the south side of the house is actually not visible. It's um, up above what, it's a propane tank? Or yeah, it's behind. Yeah, it's behind the shrub and the um, stairs. But you would have to do, if you were to keep this overhang, would the door fit in there with these knee braces, or would you have to post it, or would you have to? The, the slider could fit here, or I could eliminate this, and the slider could fit here. I see. Yeah. This face is south? That's south facing, yes. I want to put a couple of posts out here, bring this white, white this, bring it out a little further and have a nice little covered patio out there. Um, that's not in budget, I'm okay. afraid. That's okay. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, I, that's that's a beautiful idea, but I, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to pay for that. Okay. Yeah, just realistically. The fire escape isn't actually using the roof. The fire escape is not using the roof. It's really hard to tell. Like it's not, there's Looks no, like structure. no, this, connection. using this little, no, it is not, no. So if you get rid of the roof, what do you know? No, it, it, it is not bearing uh, weight on that. Where's the access? Are these stairs going up from this direction here? Are these stairs, or what is that little thing in the corner of the, that photo? Yeah, I think that's the stairs. I think yeah, I, I think it's just they're they are right next to each other. They're adjacent, but they're one is not bearing on the other. Okay. Yeah. So the access to those stairs are from the other somehow from the other side. No, there's if you. Um, it's hard to tell. It looks like this. So they come down. They, come they down descend. Here to there. They descend right here. The foot of the steps is right there. Right. They come. They come at an angle. They turn. Going from right to left as you're looking at it. That's correct. Yeah. So they come down from this uh, roof roof line window. Okay. And then they turn on a platform there and come down. Okay. To the front. For me, I'd want to keep the roof just for sake of protection. But that's, I know it's not a main entrance, but it's obviously to the warranty that the people that's already there and it's provided right. some cover. That's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm flexible as to where the, the, the sliding glass door goes. It doesn't, if you all think that it's better with the roof than well, what we could do with me. what we could do would be to, since I think the uh, regulation allows the complete anything within two years. It would give you the option to recreate this overhang with that same profile over the slider within two years after approval. Okay. So you don't have to do it now if the budget doesn't allow, but if you decide in a six months that that might be a really good idea, you could throw some stone in there and make a little overhang, a couple of posts and an overhang, you probably do that for it. Under a thousand dollars easily. Okay. If you decided to make that a nice amenity for that unit, so that even on a rainy day somebody could go out the door and sit. And yeah, that's that sounds great. Any comments, questions, suggestions about the possibility of doing that?
there is a scarf there. I hadn't planned on making any light changes at all. I'll just leave. Right, whichever seems to make more sense, or I don't know if it matters to the committee. Whether it's a casement or not, it's going to look the same from the exterior. I think the casement would let more air into the kitchen. I think. Yeah, the stove is going to be there. Yeah. And it is a covered porch, so um, the casement window could work pretty well. And there's no traffic, you know, people aren't walking by. You wouldn't be reaching this way over the stove, you'd be at the stove reaching to the side. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I would like. Again, this is an optional change at your discretion. I just said on the south side of the dwelling at the location of the proposed replacement of the existing door and under the sliding door, the existing overhangs may be removed and or a replacement overhang with matching profile may be installed to cover the area outside the proposed sliding door. Sounds great. And again, you don't have to do that now. You can do that later this year or next year. Mm -hmm. Other comments, questions, suggestions to be added? Okay, the evaluation criteria again for this, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style is the proposed projects in, in the historic district or involves in historic structure. The modifications are acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district acceptable. Compatibility of proposed materials with the properties of the district acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping not proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities. Is there any lighting next to the doorway? Looks like there's a light coming down from the overhang, possibly. Uh -huh. Is that a light? I there's a light there. Yep. Okay. So if you take the overhang away, there's no more light. Would you want to replace that with a side light on the wall, or what's your thought on that? Um, you know, my my first thought would be I'm going to try to just maintain the overhang and and fit the door underneath it. Okay. If, and if that doesn't work, um, a side light would be fine. Yes, and again, this will be an optional change.
again and optional change if the site if the existing overhang is removed from my fixture I can leave may be replaced with a side light next to the sliding door. And last, recognition of and respect for good view quarters and significant business, including gateway to use of and stadium at the state house. I would say it's not applicable since you can't even see it from the street. All in favor of the application with the optional changes? Raise your hand. <coughs> are going to be administrative. Sorry. Okay. Just check. Uh, the hotel will be <laughs> going on to the DRV. That's not an all nice step. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you Good luck with your project. The next application for 13 Terrace Street. Jeannie Ellis and David So we would like, to, there's an existing, actually, there's some um, language, um, at least that was used in the agenda, that isn't quite accurate. It says it regards to a front porch, but actually it's the rear porch. Um, there's an existing rear porch um, that we'd like to enclose. We'll be doing some kind of foundational work and some structural work to, to make that viable. Um, but there's an existing roof line there that we'd simply like to uh, to enclose um, and bring into the into the envelope of the of the building uh, to be incorporated into uh, a new mudroom. So this is what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I'm sorry, just because I don't know you, just for the record, could you state your names? Oh well, yeah, sure. My name is uh, David Pelletier. Dave is the homeowner, along with his wife Jeannie. so many times okay. we all know it by now. <laughs> <laughs> on the 
upper on the gable end, not the gable end, um, this that window there. Mm -hmm. um, that's like you know that's that's you know kind of that 32 by 60 window that we always see on the old houses. Um, so it would be something to that effect, like that 32 by 60. So this is not a stamp drawing. That is. Mm -hmm. It is not a perfectly scaled drawing. No, perfect. I mean, this looks it looks really wide, big. doesn't it? Thank yes. you for thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. It would be that. It would be that. Um, the height would follow right through. So the so the water table above the vertical uh, wainscot detail carries yes. right through, and we carry the we carry the head casing right through. And I actually haven't done that field measure yet, but it's going to be something to the tune of that 60 inches. And the intention is that the window, the replacement window, takes the place. Of That's correct, yes, that's correct, yes. Um, just out of curiosity, had you thought about keeping this trend within this field? Thought about it, but given that that's not an original detail, because that whole thing was once a covered porch, mm -hmm. and somebody some time ago started the process of incorporating the covered porch into the inside of the building, um, so it, it made sense to me to not maintain that necessarily. And you're not putting a window there because when you open the door at 90. You know. Correct, yeah, it's just. Yeah. And you, do, you said, is this window being replaced here that as window, well? That window actually is being replaced. And I'm actually, I'm realizing that I should have been explicit, so I'm going to take this opportunity to be explicit about it, and I, and I forgot to be in this application. Um, we're actually, we'd like to move those windows out, um, and, and um, ah, I'm realizing that I should have included that in this application, and, and, I, and I forgot to be explicit about it, so hopefully I can take this opportunity to be explicit about it. Um, we'd like to... This is that, that that existing double casement that you just circled right there, Steve. Yes. Is in the middle of this wall right here. Mm -hmm. And we'd actually like to spread them out. Um, or and would they remain casements? They would remain casements, which is the windows that you were just pointing out there. Same height and width? Correct. Um, plus or minus a tiny bit. Okay. I'm assuming these are just old wood frame casements. They are. They're like from the 80s or something like that. Um, yeah. So um, that existing casement is approximately in the middle of that, of that mm -hmm. cabinet run there, and we're, we'd like to um, move, move those windows out like that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what would the sill height be? Much lower? The sill height's going to be they basically the same as what's there. That that existing window is just above an existing countertop. Oh, okay. We're proposing to put these existing windows just again, on either just, side, just so it'd be roughly the same size, but just spread out. Exactly correct. Pretty close to the same yeah. dimension. Yes. Yeah. As far as height goes, yes. Yeah. Use the wood frame integrities, or we would use. No, we've got those in there as as um, you know, on the exterior. Or the exterior oh, the integrity, the integrity yeah, yeah. to wood frame integrity. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yep. And I'm assuming this window, which will now be on the inside, will be gone? Or? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yep. And you said originally this was a covered well, porch? Or well, originally the, there's an existing kind of where that single small window is mm -hmm. that we're proposing to replace with the double hung. That that all that that area there, in between kind of you know, the corner boards, those flat stock corner boards. That that was all that was all at one point a covered porch. Okay. And I don't know when they did it, but some decades ago they they partitioned that off and brought that into the other room.
half light uh, two panel below, but now the glass would be clear glass. South side. Um, is that south? It's facing up. No, the Bailey. Gable, the gable end with the window issue that you were discussing is uh, is north. Terrace Street is actually the south southwest start side of the house. I'm not sure if it helps at all, but this is not Terrace Street up towards Middleset. This is Terrace Street back towards the Capitol. Yes, it's right near the corner of yeah, Bailey. Yeah, yeah. And actually, Bailey runs north because you're, as you come down Bailey, you're looking up the hill towards National Life, which is to the south. Right. So this would actually be the south side because this Bailey is running south this way. No, so no, no, no Bailey's south. running north that way. Turned around. Running.
bridge light fixture may be mounted next to the proposed doorway into the enclosed public area. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the, of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application, raise your right hand. Application 100 Main Street. Carl Miller, applicant. Mary Alice. <laughs> so we'll take. I'll just jump in really quick to go and give you guys a little bit of a heads up. The parklet is going to be a proposal that is going to City Council. So this is a DRC recommendation to City Council for the parklet because that appears in the street right away. This is not an application that gets a zoning permit or goes to DRB. This will be a recommendation for Council. Okay. So you can give this this to us and then we'll get it to council. Yep, same recommendation, just different recipient. Thank you so much for letting us come and speak with you. I'm Mary Alice Prophet, the applicant. This is my architect, Talia Stoneroff, and Rick Cannon of Cannon Construction. Nice to be here. We do have a few edits to make right away, just to be clear about the drawings. We were working on a tight time frame between the time that um, <clears throat> the park, new parklet ordinance was announced at the Montpelier Business Association meeting and today. So Talia has very kindly um, donated a lot of her time as an architect to get this work done. But she is a full-time professor and has a family. So, you know, we did have some edits that needed to be made that were really difficult to get to you in time for this meeting. So I just want to start, um, if it's okay with you, um, Mr. Everett, you can tell me whenever um, it's okay with you for me to add those. Is it okay, okay. now? Yes. Okay. Great. I didn't. I'm it's working with a kind of awkward and large copy tell you. Do you have a smaller one I can glance at? Okay. All right. So the first edit, just to be very clear, um, and, and I just want to say that the intention of applying for this space is to create, with our very, very short window of good weather um, and good, you know, outdoor seating weather here in downtown Montpelier, to create an additional space for the community that benefits the entire community in downtown Montpelier and draws people into Langdon Street, down Langdon Street, so that our neighbors on Langdon Street and our surrounding um, you know, business owners and those that work there can all sort of just have more folks on that corner. Um, and I would say that um, the goal is to create a little bit more seating and while we're open for business this seating would be for people that are either buying takeout from the takeout window or are you know eating at down home however per the new ordinance the space is open to the community whenever we're not open for business so anybody can come and sit and right now a lot of people enjoy our outdoor seating who are not customers when we're not open so um, that's that we're excited about it we were concerned about um, making sure that it's safe for those people that are sitting inside of the space and also vehicles that are turning the corner and the first edit that I wanted to point out to you is that the trees which what I'm talking to Gardener's Supply about 
is our river birches that they are actually in planters outside of the parklet space. In the um, plan here, it appears that they're inside the seating space. And the reason why I want to point that out to you is that the intention is that if a vehicle hit something, it would hit the tree and the planter first and not the people sitting in the parklet. I did speak with Carlo and Ben Draper from Positive Pie about this and, you know, hasn't been an issue with them but that would be a separate standalone planter and what we would like to ask is to place them close to when, where Bencini's trees were placed before which is more in the triangular space um, just because it gives a buffer of room between the planter and the beginning of the parklet structure in case something were hit there's a little bit of like space for it to move and I, I believe that you did have your structure hit one time so it's just for safety purposes. And then the reason why we'd like to have one on each side of the parklet is to create some shade. And I think that's also around the issue of safety, just in terms of people that are elderly or dogs, having some space to be that's out of the sun. Um, and another edit that I just wanted to mention to you in terms of the window application, this is a Marvin window and what we're asking to do is to bring the double hung windows from the second story down and mimic that and in the drawing it appears to be a more modern you know looking window similar to like a fast food drive through that's not the case what we're asking to do would be two windows the same dimensions in terms of it would be a smaller version of what you see on the second um, floor I just wanted to be clear about that. And then I also wanted to be clear that the rope is intended to make sure that anyone waiting in line stays off of the sidewalk so that that sidewalk is completely clear and open for wheelchairs and traffic to flow. And that's very important. And the sweet peas are something green that's fun that, you know, um, would- These are what are growing on top Right, of this is a sweet pea that wouldn't be like a thick, you know, wall of green. You could see through it, it's a little bit transparent. So I'll stop talking and we're very excited and happy to answer any questions that you might have. And also we would love suggestions from you um, in terms of your thoughts and we can answer questions about the structure itself or the window, whatever you have. Is there a window there now, or, or is it just these two? There yeah. is. So that's, there is. that okay. is an existing window, okay. um, and it's just highlighted in that drawing to call attention that this is where it's, 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 it's really much more of a, um, that window really doesn't fit the, the downtown as much. The ones that are coming yeah. in are much more. Um, right. So that window looks directly into the kitchen. So this is really exciting for us because people on the sidewalk are going to be able to look directly like a food truck in and see our line cooking. And also, we have just purchased, uh, thanks to my wonderful manager, Maggie, a really great creamy machine. So we can do maple creamies right there at the window. And all the maple syrup will be coming from my farm and my kid's uncle's farm in Callis. So having maple creamies right there and having an existing window that's fixed that can't open, just changing that so that it can open. So the one on the right would be the order window and the one on the left would be the pickup window. And we're developing an app through um, ch probably Chowhound where you can order your food and drinks and pay for it um, through your cell phone. And that way you just come and pick it up. So if you want to order, you know, barbecue for dinner, fried chicken for lunch, but you don't have time to eat in and dine in. And the intention is just to speed up service for the community for all those people that are really busy. Are the parking meters? Staying. That would be up to you guys. I mean, we, you know, don't really have authority to. I don't think we do either. I did look at them and they appear just like the bike locks to, you know, it looks like they would be able to be pulled, but I, you know, whatever you guys tell us to do. So currently on the side of the building, there are only two parking spaces? There are three. Three? And the reason why we're asking for all three, I just want to be really clear about this, because I understand that the ordinance 
allows for three more spaces for this season. Um, Tom Cardle from Public Works told me that he would like to see the structure 15 feet off of the back of the building because of the amount of traffic that pulls into the new Onion River Outdoors and the backside for deliveries. And so what we need, it's, we're not really able to take up all three, but we would like to have that space for about half of this, the parking spot would be structure and then space for that additional tree. And I think it's more than just safety, it's also aesthetics, having a really balanced um, aesthetic when we put this in is very important. So to the eye, you're not really looking at a structure, you're looking at the greenery, you're looking at the trees, you're looking at the historic building, and your eye is drawn to the people, the activity, but I really prefer in terms of design to not draw attention to the actual structure just because I think downtown Montpelier is pretty enough as it is. We don't need, you know what I mean? The idea is to look and see what's already existing there. Um, so we just need that third space just because I also think it's a little unsafe to have one of those spaces be for parking just because I've watched so many people out the window at the restaurant over the last three years try to parallel park and not everyone is very good at it. So I think in terms of safety, it would be better not to have someone trying to parallel park right next to all the seating. But again, we're open to what you guys think. It's also very narrow. I just want to be clear about that. This drawing can sort of give you the illusion that you're getting a lot of space. Um, Talia did a great job with it but it's very, very narrow. So you're literally walking in to your table right away, and there's not a lot of room in there to walk around. So it, it's kind of like you're mostly, it's gotta be, the space has to be sort of long and along the sidewalk in order to make it worthwhile. Um, and we're proposing using the same beer garden style tables we have in the front just because they're community style and we feel like it'll encourage community, people to get to know each other and talk and, you know, make new friends and all that fun stuff. So this uh, rendering makes it looks as though it's built out of pallets and then it mentions something about pallets. Is that the intention that this is all? Mm, no, I'll let Talia speak to that partly. And I do want to say this has to do, I think, with kind of like our tractor seats in the restaurant. We want to nod to our concept, to being down home and being America's smallest capital and um, agricultural center and the idea of pallets with sweet peas growing out of them. To me, th that's the planter. That's not the actual structure. And the idea is to create something that's fun and whimsical, lighthearted, and we have an alcohol license. And as long as the variance goes through and is okay, like the positive high one, you know, people can have a beer and sit outside and it's just, it's country without looking, you know, it's homey without looking um, too, you know, informal. So, but can you explain about the structure? Yeah, yeah so the, much, um, the idea of using pellets was part of the initial concept, which I thought was great. Reuse something, recycle something, it's a temporary structure. Um, the idea is there would be a framed wall and the pellets would be attached to that. So within that framed wall, you can see on the second page, um, uh, there's a larger drawing. Um, this space here is where the dark area, that's, you know, that would be a typical framed wall um, that then could have growing mediums, so the sweet peas could grow up. And on either side, you're using this really abundant recycled material of the pallet as the, the, the siding. And it would be filled with Vermont compost from our friend Carl, Hammer Up the Hill. And the idea, you can't tell from the trees currently because like I mentioned, they're outside the structure and what we're proposing, but it would wrap around the whole exterior. So you have that. And then in terms of stakes, we would have your garden stakes, but painted probably green so that they blend in like we currently do with our tomatoes. And then have some string lights that are battery operated that create a lot of nice ambiance in the evening for people sitting underneath, going from stake to stake and throughout the trees. And so just creating almost like that backyard feel of being in your backyard or at a farm in the summer where people can sit outside and it's really just charming, charming, you know? So I have a couple questions. Um, the signage looks like some sort of menu signage. Thank you for asking. That is another edit. Vivian Beer, who won Ellen DeGeneres' um, design challenge on TV, you might know of her, is coming tomorrow to um, 
us finish designing the signs that we're going to submit to you to look at, so we're not uh, we're not applying for signs today. So my next question is: Is this going to be lit up? What? The parkway. Um. Well, we're proposing using some using string lights to help light it at night, and then when we um, apply with the signs, we will most likely try to um, apply to add some very tasteful and limited lighting directed towards our signs, and hopefully that lighting can carry over. But it's a it's pretty well lit there in the evening. Um, it's not very dark on that corner, so hopefully we don't need a ton of lighting. Currently, we're open on the evenings that we are open until 9 p.m. And um, you know, we are a breakfast restaurant first and foremost, so our intention is not to be a late night spot for people. Should have good light in the summer. Yeah, yeah, that's the hope. Yeah, we're going to be yeah. Okay. it's more of a dusky ambiance. Um, we've thought about it, and at this current time. We're not applying for umbrellas, and I think that has to do with the way that the space is and the the length of these tables and what I'm currently looking at. I mean, if we really had to do something, we might consider it, but right now, we're not looking at that. But we're open to all suggestions, so. One quick question, but the sign that's showing here is just a sign on a blank wall. Would the sign fit into the existing frame that's there? Right. So the sign, we're going to come back and apply for signs later. And what, just so that you know what we're thinking about, because Talia just sort of added something, but it's not in the application. We're thinking of applying for a blade sign, and you can see that on the first page on the corner. There is an existing um, structure that comes out of the corner where a blank blade sign did used to hang. So we'll apply for that. The structure yes, for there is. And then we'll be applying for a smaller sign that hangs um, with the awning over the takeout window. And in terms of that sign, like for a menu, we haven't decided yet, but my hope is that we would do something that could be brought out every morning, hung, and then brought back inside because I don't really like leaving things out on the sidewalk overnight. Because you have a natural frame there now. I, mm -hmm. I know, isn't that cool? Now, the, to the right of that, there's a, is that doorway infilled now? I, I can't um, the, remember. Where, which one are you looking at, Steve? The existing yes. photos here. Right, right. We have That's a fire escape, but an egress door that is okay. functional. It is functional at the present. That was the, okay. dirt, the door to the old basement, mm -hmm. and we shuttered it. In, um, so either one of those spots, they're shuttered right now, would be great for you know signage. But again, I, I lean towards something that would be hung where we would bring it in and change what we're doing, and it wouldn't take up the whole space. It wouldn't be that well, You large. said that's a functional doorway. Yeah, 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 you have the door on the right um, to the left of here. the tall window. Yes. You, and then you have two oh, yeah. windows that were closed off Okay. and are collaborated over. Yes, okay. So we do have one functional side door, and that is what, another thing. These windows along Langdon and that side door provide really good visibility for our staff inside not just to make sure the area stays clean, which would be our responsibility, but also to keep an eye on that sidewalk really closely and make sure that people aren't blocking the sidewalk and it's just managed better. One other quick question. Are these removable standards for the road area or are you proposing? It just looks like there's a pole down into the sidewalk yeah. here. They, yeah, but it's a just a freestanding standard. It would be brought in every night. Yeah. Okay. I, didn't see that. I, I like your rendering here. Are you proposing to build the pallets or are you proposing to get, get them? I think the idea was to get them. Great question. Um, because then that seems to be I mean, what I like about this is everything lines up nice uh, yeah. and, and that's hard to render. But when you go out into the world and collect pallets, mm -hmm. they're going to be, they're not all going to be constructed the same. Mm -hmm. They might be different heights, they might be different.
soil straight into right. something that's going right. um, yeah. to... The dirt would be inside a planter set inside the parklet, correct? No? My thinking was to staple like a biodegradable um, material like you would use when you're laying down crops and have that lining the inside so you can just drop the soil right in. We don't want to take up so much space that we, you know, that there's no point in doing it. So that was the intention behind growing sweet peas, because there's a very, you know, the root system is, it, they grow quickly, but there's not a big root system that needs a lot of space to grow. It might be easier to build a pallet that allow <laughs> that, like, create the space in there, and then something that I presume you want to use this in the future, not just for one season, so that it's a more sort of easily taken apart and put back together mm -hmm. season after season versus sort of a jumble of pallets and sort of like, uh, how does right. this actually go back together? That's definitely a great thing to consider and one of the reasons why we were excited to come to this meeting to get your ideas. I think to, to speak to that, um, one of the reasons why our, our firm is incredibly busy right now, when Mary Alice came to me with this, I, I, I couldn't say no. It sounded like such a wonderful asset to the community, I immediately selfishly could see myself there all the time. Um, and then also, in you know, we worked on, on Down Home years ago when you first applied, and when I go into the restaurant and see what Rick and Mary Alice were able to, the, the level of finishes that are in the restaurant, I I have confidence that that, that level of finishes is going to come through on this, and I definitely appreciate that comment um, about the, the palettes, and I think that's a I also have confidence that I think that, that we will be able to. I agree with that. Off. Any other questions about the window or um, the design or recommendations or ideas that might help us just make sure that we're thinking about all the needs of the community? Obviously, this would be handicap accessible, and we would make sure that the space is on the ends of the table. I measured for a table order so that wheelchairs could pull right up to the ends of these tables. And same thing with like strollers and there's an area for dogs if you want to sit with your dog. But anything else where you guys feel like you have something that you've seen in another city or an idea? I mean, we, there is an awning also. And just to be clear about that, that one and a half story building um, drains really badly in the center onto the sidewalk like I watched it a lot over the last few years um, it, not really badly but like it, if it's raining you don't want to be standing at that window without an awning so um, it's not going to be like the awning we currently have which I kept the old frame and we just added new fabric because I was on a budget and it just drops straight down this awning would just go out a little bit like the three penny awning and that just gives a little more space for people to stand. But visually, the awning It looks so. exactly the same as the black white stripe on the front of the restaurant. Is that permanently attached, or is that just like removable? It would <clears> be <throat> attached similar to the awning that we currently have in the front of the building. And um, I think it would be really cute. <laughs> I'm, sometimes I get sick of people saying the restaurant's cute. I'm like, Really, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think the awning would be good. Retractable? Yes, it would be retractable. Do you have any specific color samples of the colors that you're using? For the wood? Is that what you're talking Either about? Either for the wood or are you going to leave it natural or stained or? Oh, the wood itself? Mm -hmm. um, we haven't decided that yet. I was really hoping to get suggestions from you guys because during our design review process, um, we talked about, I remember like you and Ben specifically having some really good input. Um, so we haven't made a decision, but we would. I'd love to hear anything in terms of people's experience, what they've seen around town that works well, that weathers well. Um, I don't want to do anything that's red or, you know, that, that it, looking natural and blending in is the goal, but any, I was hoping that we would get through this in city council and then we could, Rick, I could select something with Tolia. But Currently it's shown as just a natural, mm -hmm. natural letting it gray naturally or doing it. It just depends on the material 
process, whether it's new pallet, old pallet. Right. Right. I think we would try to save time and not get into like staining preferably, but like we clear coat the furniture on, mm -hmm. out front right now and we do that every year before we put it out or when we put it out just with a, like a boat lacquer or actually it's that for yeah, natural coating because that's what we use. Product we use. Yeah. I guess it just depends on what you have for pallets, <clears throat> whether you want to leave them natural or whether you want to mm -hmm. leave them, you know, spray them all in color before you mount them or yeah. yeah so again it just depends on how they come through you know, if they're coming or writing on them or no you know, i don't think that, want it we don't want it no we don't <laughs> want to be funky this is not a graffiti we're not making a statement about it, it just looks nice with the color that you're showing here in you the like drawings yeah i like the sort of uh, brownish And I'm really excited about the trees. I know so many people, all the old photographs of Langdon Street that I've pulled from the Historical Society, I mean, there's just so many trees, and there's just so few right now. So just even, mm. you know, just getting people thinking more about the importance of tree planting, I'm very excited about that. And I watched how many people responded to Ben's, um, I don't know what to call it, <laughs> it was it was your it was your sculpture, but yep. so many people gravitated towards it, and just and they didn't know why they were doing that. But it was amazing to watch that out my window every day, seven days a week. So I think there's nothing more beautiful than street trees. I'm a big. And one last, just quick question for my own information: yeah. the existing window trim around the window there will that be retained? Absolutely. Okay. Is there any is there any lighting on the side of this part of the building now? That's there is um, there are a few light bulbs that are very strangely like <laughs> sticking out of the trim. Um, they're very odd. Uh, they don't function. They don't work. And other than that, the only lighting on that side of the building is on that side egress that we had to put in. Mm -hmm. We have um, like a can light in the ceiling that okay. shines down. That's all we have currently. Okay. Anybody have any more comments, questions, suggestions of any kind? I'm not sure if we, uh, we established that the, uh, the deck of the parkway will be the same height as the side. Yeah. That's in the notes. It's in the notes. Okay. Thank you. Material. So that's not going to be pallets. That'll so that'll be a solid floor, yeah. so no crumbs can get down. It'll be easy. So it'll be so cool. wood. It'll be wood. Just a wood decking. Wood decking, yeah. Tight. Or possibly plywood. Possibly plywood. Okay, <laughs> that's acceptable. Like an advanced type of green floor. Well, I don't know, but uh, in the cafe on the corner there of Elm Street. I would have painted it. I don't know if you've been in there, but there's a slight chance. That's one idea I had for all the things together. And keeping it tight is a uh, standard from the city regarding it is. creatures getting underneath. It there. was a recommendation from Tom at Public Works. Yeah. And as well, we talked also about um, drainage mm -hmm. and just making sure that you, know, you never know with the weather. Which so. is also interesting. Yeah. So sleep resistance. they'll use 
use a, a decking material and since you're only seven feet from here to here you can you can do that panelized so that at mm -hmm. the end of the season when you have to take it up you yeah. just that the whole thing comes apart like a puzzle right right that's what i was thinking so is there a plan to update drawings for city council based on this audrey didn't ask us to do that um but you know i think that um she did not ask us to do that. Well, she, and in fact, we weren't told that we needed to be at Wednesday's meeting until Friday. So that might be the reason why they're kind of, you know, just because this is new and they they didn't have all the systems down yet for this. So I think, you know, there's been, I'm not going to say anything other than we're very grateful to be here and we were not asked to do that. So. I think also the, concept is very similar to what's shown. The, yeah. the, the changes are really that the trees are moved off further from the parkway. Yeah, and I think City Council probably trusts this committee's um, expertise in terms of feedback. So. Does anybody have any suggestions? Is there any specific recommendations? Just to note that the window is separate. The window is not part of the parking application. <coughs> right. we, you, we you're going to be it. voting two separate yeah. decisions yes. on this. This okay. is just the, just the park. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. I mean, I've already said this, but I think building pallets would make a more, you'd get the sort of gesture that you're looking for and keep a much sort of cleaner thing, much like your rendering. Well, Rick and I have been working together first on this, and then he worked on my home for the last couple of years, which is from 1800, and did an incredible job with the historic preservation of my home. And if we ever do anything, we spend too much money on it and are too <laughs> careful about the historic integrity and the type. We have a problem with that, not the going the opposite direction. So, the other advantage of building them is that you can make them lighter weight and penalized uniform panelized so that it's easier to put together to take apart since you're putting this up and taking it down once you know each right. year yeah yeah yes definitely yes I mean I can't tell you guys how many people love the tomatoes that we've grown out front of the restaurant Senator Leahy's wife even had him come and get tomatoes one time and I I you know kids and older folks and so just think, having things that are edible on the sidewalk it's just so much fun because a lot of people live in town yep. and some people live in apartments and they just don't have garden space so um, I think it's going to be fun you know and also just in terms of the criteria uh, there is you know compatibility of, ma of materials uh, and appearance I think mm -hmm. when you're showing this and it's, there's a uniformity to it and a uniformity in color I think that more closely addresses the criteria as far as Langdon Street being you know one you want to make it as classy as possible and I think that looks really sharp. We do, we really do. Um, we, we care a lot about this building. It's on the National Register. It's going to be here a lot far, far after I'm gone, hopefully because of all the work we did to the structure in the basement and making sure it didn't fall into Langdon. So we're excited to celebrate it. It's a beautiful building. Any other comments, questions? And what we'll do is we'll go through two parts. There are two criteria sheet, one for the parklet. Any more comments, questions, suggestions for the parklet itself? Okay, I'll run through the criteria. One, preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district that involves an historic structure. The parklet being separate, I would say, was not applicable to number one. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district uh, based on the drawings, and we would say that's acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, acceptable. Prevention of use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. 
location and appearance of all utilities. Again, the string lighting, battery operated string lighting is acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Uh, I would say it's acceptable for the parkway. Any other comments or suggestions? All in favor of the parklet application, put your hand. And we'll do this in two parts. This again, this is for the parklet. I'll get you to sign above my name in the lower left corner there. Thank you. This application, the second part, is for the proposal to replace the existing window with two double hung windows with a restaurant takeout, awning post, rope barrier, small counter in the window. Do we need any more information or do you have questions or comments regarding that? Okay, then we'll go through the criteria for that one. Preservation of reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of proposed projects in the historic district that involves an historic structure. Uh, on the structure, that's acceptable. Harmony of exterior design, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none on this part. On the landscaping is all with the parklet. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views at the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application for the takeout window and associated aspects, raise your hand. Sign that one in the same spot. Thank there you go. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, are we good to go then? Anything else to uh, discuss? City Council. This is the department. We'll we will send the recommendation up to Jamie, who is running the yes. parklet process right. and the other recommendation we will get to Audra and I think that's these are all just permitted uses so I think that would just go out so in the she, next couple she days. asked us to attend the City Council meeting on Wednesday and we'll be there and in the meantime we would really appreciate it if everybody would either call me email us or stop by the restaurant when you think of anything you know related to this before we start building because you know I know sometimes I come up with great ideas at, at not a great time, but let us know your thoughts and thank you very much for your time. Thank okay, you. thank you and good luck with the project. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need to that. Sorry. So we managed to get all the way through, except for. Well, I knew it was going to be too crowded. There was too much for an hour. It was too much for an hour and a half, but we got pretty close. So, um, so do we need a table, I assume? Is this a table one? Uh, well, I think the DRV is waiting for them. It was waiting for your recommendation yeah. as okay. well. So I well, think we'll, run, we'll, we'll run over then. Yeah. Come yeah. forward. We'll try to speed it up as much as I'll, we can. I'll go check with them. Can you send the DRV? Yeah. yeah, great. These are the same as you should have received in your packets, but I'm just bringing okay. good quality colored versions in case you, just to be sure. <laughs> um, thank you for the time this evening. This is this is, should be a fairly simple thing. We're not re-litigating the entire 
proposal. It's just for the retaining walls. Yeah. Um, we were unsure, and I, this is still kind of a, a, a weird issue that um, uh, in our working with the Christ Church to get everything kind of worked out, we weren't sure in which application to illustrate some of these retaining walls. Um, so we didn't talk about it in previous meetings because we were unclear as to whether or not that would be part of a separate application. I think in the end that the church is going to come to you with a separate application for any improvements on their land. Um, in the meantime, we were asked by the Development Review Board to at least show how this could work. And so we're showing stuff on the church land just to illustrate that this all comes together, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. Before I move on, I just want to make sure everybody's acknowledges that. So the proposal before you is for retaining walls. There are four distinct retaining walls in this application. And I don't know why we never spoke of them before, but they are two at the western end of the site, one attached to the proposed hotel building, the other one attached to the original Capitol Plaza building. And then there's a, a retaining wall down in this corner here that, uh, that is a result of the bike path project. And this retaining wall set up here that we're going to talk about for the to separate the Christ, uh, the, the Capitol Plaza property from the Christ Church property, in the short term at least. Um, when this project gets built, we'll be raising grade in order to comply with your floodplain regulations. And so we need to do a little work to transition back to the original plan. So this includes. Um, and when you say temporary, in the event that they kill the building, they might. Exactly. Right, you and uh, it, it could be there forever. We should, we should acknowledge that, but it, it, if everything goes well for the church, at some point there's going to be an apartment building here. So we're proposing two different ways of doing it. On the west end of the site, where these uh, retaining walls are attached to the major structures, we're proposing casting place concrete walls. And those are illustrated uh, for you all over the page 101.2. The wedge-shaped uh, retaining wall you see on the top of the page relates to the uh, east end of the hotel here. And that's simply to allow us to, tr there's a change of grade as we ramp up to the, to the uh, building floor elevation. And this is just to help in that transition. Well, it'll, it, you know, it's meant to be an exposed architectural grade concrete. And, uh, you know, so it's going to take, it's going to take a little bit of effort to get that out of, out of the contractor, but, uh, um, you know, it, it, it'll have to be robbed and, and if, if it's, if it needs to be filled. It'll be filled. The idea is that it's a continuation of the foundation of the building, so it creates a sort of seamless experience as you walk up the hill. It's a good um, material. We all, we all know what, what kind of concrete you normally get around here, I and mean, it's just for, it's for something like that, we'll, we will, uh, We'll babysit it to get to get a good finish quality. Uh, in the case of the uh, L-shaped retaining wall that's attached to the um, this is the ca original block. Capitol Plaza building. This will be the unit block system oh, that this we're is using. The, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. okay. I stand corrected. Um, and then and then on page 101.1, you see the retaining wall at the top of the page, which is. We don't need to do this, but because the bike path comes in, the bike path is raising grade because they're coming from over the river. And so this retaining wall is basically meant to to elevate the balance of the site up to match up with the bike path between the garage and the uh, With that wall, we've been able to create a little rest area for the bikers and a little a mini little pocket park there, if you look at the plan. And uh, in coordinating with Stantec and the city and everyone is, seems very excited about it. And this is this is a block wall. Yeah, that'll that's be the block wall again. Wall. Yeah, the idea is uh, unit block walls for all of the uh, west wing wall there. Best rendering you're going to see of that is in this. Um, I actually have a product here. Um, we've been sort of working through pricing and coming up with it. The idea is that we would do one of the pitched faced, and then the steel mountain is the color that we've chosen so far. And this will be sort of the, what it looks like. We wanted to use a, a modular system, especially in here, because there's the possibility that if that ever gets rearranged, we can reuse those parts, you know. You might have to, we can just lift them apart. There's nylon pins that hold them together, generally. You add to it or subtract from it to whatever they need to 
So do they batter back some? Or are they we have very uh, on the larger walls there'll be a slight batter to them. Um, on the smaller walls we don't think so. So on the six foot wall we think there will be a batter. Yeah, a lot of structural will have to that would be that would be here before we go ahead and install it. Yeah, it, it's especially important to pay attention to this uh, elevation looking west from the church parking lot. Um, that's been a that's been an ongoing concern. I think it's why we're still talking to you, but um, it shows that uh, uh, there's a, a basically a, a maximum exchange of grade of two and a half feet. So we've worked hard internally on the grading of the project so that that transition from the hotel property to the church has been mitigated down to a maximum of two and a half feet. And like I said, you know, as the church's plans for their apartment project evolve and stuff, the, um, uh, uh, that'll be a separate application. Uh, what we wanted to do is just show what it, you know what we would do today to make things right with the church as they stand. So uh, it, it, it really, in the end, only involved about 34 yards of fill, which was about three truckloads and a little bit of pavement change. The, the, none of the fill section will come anywhere near the historic structures. Uh, this has been designed to make sure that a, a, an ADA accessible route will remain from State Street to the back door of the church. And, um, and uh, you know, I think uh, it, it respects um, uh, the uh, existing accessible ramp to the back of the church hall and uh, it also has well away from any underground storage tanks, so it's fairly modest, this proposal, uh, and I think, I think it will be attractive in the short term. Um, it's creating a far safer access to that church building. So we, we just, uh, that's, that's the long and the short of it. Here's, here are the materials, which, you know, we can pass around. And, uh, James and I are here to answer questions. Yeah. It's over this way. So we can all see it on the record here. Okay. You want to say this? So I want to just kind of have a view here. Looking west from the church parking lot. Here's a church parking lot in here. We're looking west. So this is retaining yeah, wall here as well. That's correct, yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, does anybody that? understand the extent of the walls? Well, they, it's, it's really not in the civil drawings. It's a little clear. I have my record. It's, it's not. It's not it's highlighted that you know that that's it, where it is. It starts. But, well, they're easier to read at 24 by 36. But I wanted everybody to have one. Yeah. Essentially, there's a bend in the fence right now that goes around the memorial garden. There's a big kink in that wooden stockade fence, yeah. and the, the retaining wall would start here at yeah. next to nothing, and then as grade comes up, you so, know. Yeah. So at this will point, will that retaining wall affect the? any of the existing vegetation that's on the church lot now? Well, uh, the, <coughs> not the, uh, the the notable things are those big white arborvitaes, those the big white cedars that uh, that are sort of between the fence and the Capitol Plaza. It, the, the wall starts after all of that. So we're, we're building now in an area where existing, the parking surface comes right up to that fence, but in this proposal, we're pulling that curb line back onto our property. Okay, and so the fence remains and the, and the wall would be on the parking lot side of the fence up against the fence, or? No, it'd be on our property, on property. except for where it needs to turn. There's not six feet. There's the existing fence, so they're going to, yes. what's, it's currently up to the fence, so they're, they're going to pull it back onto their property and open up an area that's not. So there'd be a couple of three feet or whatever. That's yeah, right. and then at the really top of the wall, some, some prickly plants so that uh, we don't have to put a rail, rail in there so we can screen the view to the parking lot a little bit. One of the other choices for the masonry wall, the unit block wall, is that it will require less of a tow footing, so we will be approaching in that vegetation far less than if it was cast in place or other, more, other means veneered. So the, the civil drawings show a uh, series of small yard drains in that interstitial space there just to keep it from becoming a bog. Okay. And to prevent any water from infiltrating into the memorial garden. Um, so there'd be drainage in there that diverts it off to one direction or the other anyway. It, right? it, will, it will tie into the stormwater system that's being built as part of the project. Yeah. 
Okay. We have a, a fairly large catch basin right here where all these floats come together and it'll just drain into that catch basin, which has plenty of input. Plenty of input. So which, which? It's the pitched face series and it's the gray one. I can't remember the name. It's called Steel Mountain. Steel Mountain. Yeah. This was, this was selected in part because Public Works reached out to us. We've been coordinating with State Tech on, James has been coordinating with them on the bike path part of it, and that's what they've already specced for the retaining wall that's going to be happening on the city's part of that block wall there. It's a unit block wall, yeah. We're working that's with them to get back to work. But it's the same look. It's the same look. So it's fairly resistant to snow removal. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's an yeah. autoclave cast concrete yeah, product. Ten thousand psi. It's very very strong. Has the church given any feedback on on any of the proposed retaining walls? We can, you know, we continue to dialogue with the church. We, uh, our, their, their team and, and uh, the Capital Plaza's legal team are working out an MOU now. Um, mostly, the sticking points are around shared costs and some other things. But no, there's been, there's been a very vigorous ongoing conversation between ourselves and the church. And uh, you know, I just was wondering if you've gotten any serious pushback from them about any of the proposed. Walls, elevation. No, I, I, I think obviously they hired uh, negotiation. they hired engineering venture to, to conduct an, uh, an independent uh, review of the proposed changes. Uh, we modified the work to address the concerns raised by EV, and uh, so, like I said, I, I think um, uh, ultimately the church will be coming in with some kind of application for the por portions of this that need to happen on their land, the drainage and some things like that. But hopefully that'll be a fairly minor affair. And, uh, uh, yeah, um, no, I, 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 I think uh, at, this, at this point we're down to crossing I's and dotting T's with them on the uh, an MO. Comments, questions, suggestions from anyone about the proposed retaining walls? Okay, we'll run through the criteria for this. Preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district involves an historic structure. Uh, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. Acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials or other the properties in the district acceptable. Compatibility proposed landscaping with the district acceptable. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, building, color schemes, or exterior materials acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no additional lighting proposed other than what was with the original. No other changes other than these walls. Okay. No. Utilities proposed. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. Sign that again. I'm going to get Mr. Mr. I'm going to get Mr. Bashar to sign that, but I will. Okay. Sorry.
move on, we'll have to postpone the minutes, the approval of the minutes, because there are only two of us here that are on the list. Okay. Eric and uh, Ted and Liz are not here. And any other business? Anything to end up? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So move. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. The meeting is adjourned.